The Spectre of War. Part 1, The World Situation A Hundred Years Ago and Today. The Emergence of a Spectre. The crisis on the Russian-Ukrainian border is part of a much bigger conflict. The following article tries to review the current world situation, starting from the events that have set the world on fire for a hundred years. The situation in the world today is eerily similar to the political situation in Europe during the crisis period before and after the outbreak of war in 1914, about which we can hear more and more ominous news today. Let us recall the words of a Japanese literary professor named Kato and a New York Times journalist summarized by Peter Shalvatour in his last book, The Curse of the Evil One, shortly before his death in 2014. We can draw a clear parallel between the situation at that time, 1914, and the present. One hundred years ago, a universally recognized world power defined the world, namely Britain which felt threatened by its stormy fast-paced, ambitious rival, namely Germany, while France was already in a slow decline. Today, the world is characterized by America's, U.S., deceptive omnipotence, China's rapidly growing power aspirations, and the weakening of Japanese claims. In the case of adherence to nationalist prerogatives, there is an increasing danger of a Sarajevo-type incident that would one day trigger a chain of uncontrollable processes. But we can take this parallel further. The assassination of the Austrian heir to the throne, Ferenc Ferdinand, was carried out in Sarajevo, the capital of Bosnia and Herzegovina, which at that time was under Austro-Hungarian rule. As is well known, this assassination became the cause of the First World War which was prepared in Serbia with the active involvement of British and Russian secret diplomacy, and secret services. Two, one hundred years later, in 2014, in Kiev, the capital of Ukraine, which had been part of Russia's sphere of influence for centuries, a change of government took place from western Ukraine, formerly eastern Galicia, with financial and political support from the West and the United States. This has led to a civil war in Ukraine and an escalation of the conflict between the European Union and the United States on the one hand and Russia on the other. One hundred years ago, Russian foreign policy, permeated by the idea of Pan-Slavism, sought to extend Russia's political influence to the Slavic areas of Southern Europe and the Balkans by dismantling the Austro-Hungarian monarchy. The multi-ethnic Austro-Hungarian monarchy at the time fell victim to Russia's expansionist aspirations. With the plan for enlargement to the east, is the European Union, following the old pattern, not now playing the role of Russia at the time? If we look at it that way, today Russia, which is also a multi-ethnic state, would face the fate of the former Habsburg monarchy and therefore Russia would be forced to make an alliance with China, much like the central powers of Austria, Hungary and Germany did before World War I. And in this context, the political situation in India also deserves attention. This country, which is currently in dispute with China over the border with the Himalayas and is increasingly struggling with anti-Western self-awareness, is clearly the ambivalent role of Italy at the time based on the aforementioned pattern. At that time, Italy switched to the side of the Western Allies at the last minute in hopes of acquiring South Tyrol at the expense of the Austro-Hungarian monarchy, which dealt a severe blow to the strategic ideas of the Central Powers. With all this in mind, we may have the impression that the change of government in Kiev in the winter of 2014 has revived a kind of ghost. According to Rudolf Steiner, Ghosts are created by bad laws. Examples of factors that have a bad impact on the ether body are bad laws or bad social measures in a community. For example, everything that leads to unrest, which is actually captured from person to person through bad measures, by the public mood that arises from human coexistence in such a way that its effect extends to the etheric body. And what accumulates in the etheric body as a result of such spiritual factors is also a breeding ground for these spiritually active beings in our environment. They are called spectra, 
In Hungarian we would say ghosts, horrors. And we can see that these beings, who are present in the etheric world, in the world of life, are also evolving from human life. If you want to reactivate old scenarios and public mood models with full force, the rhythm of time also plays a role. Thus, the giant ghost that arose just a hundred years ago through the unilateral treatment of the issue of war responsibility and the resulting unjust legal situation between countries, this ghost may now once again serve the interests of certain circles. All you have to do is play the roles at the time with new characters. This ghost could then steer the currents of the etheric forces of public mood in a direction that could lead to a recurrence of the course and outcome of the war from 1914 to 1918. In that case, the United States, like Britain a hundred years ago, would be on the side of the winners, the European Union, like the then Russian Tsarist Empire, would sink into political chaos due to social unrest, Russia, like the former Austro-Hungarian monarchy would fall apart due to internal ethnic and religious differences. India would take over the controversial role of Italy at the time. The United States allies in the Far East, especially Japan, South Korea, and Taiwan, would face enormous devastation as a result of the war conflicts with their huge neighbor, China, as they did for France a hundred years ago. Surrounding China from all sides, and cutting him off from oil springs, would force him to his knees. This is the purpose of the current policy of the Western powers with regard to the oil-producing states, Libya, Iraq, Iran, and Venezuela, to exclude these countries from potential oil suppliers to China. Other oil-producing countries in the Arab world are scheduled to work with the Western allies in the event of an oil blockade against China. It is crucial for Russia and China to be responsible for the current war in order for this ghost to operate as effectively as possible. And every possible means is being used to achieve this goal, which is to portray Russia and, or China as an aggressor in the eyes of the world. For example, they are trying to persuade Russia to join Ukraine. If the issue of world domination really has to be decided between the United States and China, then because of China's rapid economic growth, as the country has become the world's largest economic power last year, there is no time to waste further postponing the decision with its far eastern rival about domination of the world. Therefore, we can expect that if European countries remain willing to engage in military conflict with Russia only within certain borders, the United States will be forced to engage in open conflict with China alone. But that would mean that the U.S. would have to give up its spiritual and energetic support for the ghost of 1914, which would make the outcome of the power struggle between the two rival countries much more open. All in all, we can say that the tensions between East and West have never really been resolved in the last hundred years, there have only been more intense or milder sections of these tensions. War Part 2 The Real Stake in the War Fight for the germ of Russian culture. Mankind today faces the serious question of whether it can wake up from its state of sleepwalking, lunar disease, and whether it can find other ways and alternatives to settle political affairs. If we consider that the ghost of war is, and still is, at the service of forces that seek to steer humanity on the path of destruction and destruction, we recognize the real, world historical dimensions of this issue. The monarchy of the Western Allies was made possible in the 20th century by the defeat and destruction of the Central Powers, Germany and Austria-Hungary, a hundred years ago. Today, the question is whether they will succeed in destroying Russia and China, thereby extending this monopoly to all future cultural epochs as far as possible. However, this would lead to the suppression in its germ of certain spiritual and spiritual abilities of the people which would have to unfold in the current and the next cultural era from the cooperation of German and Russian Slavic intellectual life. In this regard, let us see a manuscript by Rudolf Steinor. Today, after humanity has gone through the worst experiences of war in the last hundred years, Rudolf Steiner's words are certainly more understandable. 
a group of people who want to dominate the earth by the means of the impulses of a mobile capitalist economy are the voicemailers. They include all the human communities that this circle is able to hold together and organize with economic means. The point is that this group is aware of the fact that within the borders of the Russian territories lives a mass of people of great importance for the future, yet unorganized, which carries the germ of a social organization. The well-calculated goal of this circle is to bring this social germ impulse into the power and authority of its own anti-social group interests. They will not be able to achieve this goal if they try to understand this germ impulse in Eastern Europe from Central Europe and seek conscious cooperation with it. And because this group is within the Anglo-American world, the current constellation of power, which obscures real contradictions and interests, has emerged as a subordinate factor. Above all, it obscures the fact that there is, in fact, a struggle between the Anglo-American plutocrats big capital groups, and the people of Central Europe, the struggle for the germ of Russian culture. The moment this fact is revealed to the world from Central Europe, a real situation replaces the unreal. The war will therefore continue in some form until the Germans and the Slavs find each other and unite with the common goal of liberating humanity from the yoke of the West. So we have no choice, either to expose the lie that the West must apply in order to enforce its will and to say that the main drivers of Anglo-American interests are the representatives and carriers of a current rooted in the pre-French Revolution impulses. Capitalism, by the means of a capitalist economy, seeks to realize world domination, and uses the impulses of revolution, the ideals of freedom, equality, brotherhood, as a mere phrase, an empty voice, to hide behind them or we hand over world domination to a secretly occult group in the Anglo-American world until the real spiritual purpose of the earth is saved from the subjugated German and Slavic territories at the cost of future bloodshed. Part 3 About the Migration Crisis War Against Europe One hundred years after the outbreak of the First World War, a new form of war is taking place in Europe, more precisely against Europe. Observing the influx of refugees in 2014-2015, we can already state two things. This is not a natural movement or migration, but a trafficking in human beings deliberately planned by certain interests and operated by organized criminal groups. The deliberate conflicts in North Africa and the Middle East, Libya, Iraq, Afghanistan and Syria, in recent years, the so-called including the Arab Spring, one of its main names, in addition to constructing a new enemy called Islamic State, Islam flooding Europe with this refugee influx, the vast majority of refugees come from Syria and Afghanistan. If this influx of people continues at this rate, although we can expect it to increase, it could lead to the social collapse of Europe in the not-too-distant future. That is the purpose of this well-designed and organized refugee flow, to shatter Europe into social and political chaos as a result of the resulting social unrest. In the first phase of the Thirty Years' War of the 20th century, World War I, the Western powers shattered and dismantled one of the two central European empires, the Austro-Hungarian monarchy. As Ferenc Fedke writes in his book Requiem for a Once Empire, the monarchy was not disintegrated, but destroyed, the complete erasure of an empire that encompassed and ruled Central Europe was a new development in history with catastrophic consequences. In the second phase of this Thirty Years' War, World War II, they then succeeded in bringing to an end the destruction of the other Central European Empire, Old Germany, by bringing the anti-anthroposophical movement, National Socialism, to power. At the moment, we are witnessing the same circles that have wiped out the two empires of Central Europe now, but by other means, trying to ruin the whole of Europe, to keep Europe, the central continent, out of the process of development and thus the development of all humanity. In accordance with their own group interests. And all because the Anglo-American dominated North Atlantic bloc, politico-military NATO and economic NATO, the Transatlantic Free Trade Agreement, 
is expanding to the east largely at the expense of Russia and China, and not openly against Russia. Europe is the main obstacle to conflict today and, above all, the continent's strongest economy, Germany. As British historian Neil Ferguson explains in one of his books on World War S, the British achieved only two years of postponing German hegemony in the United Europe by two world wars. Would it be a coincidence that most refugees in Europe are flocking to Germany? We recently learned from a statement by American political scientist George Friedman that the main driver of American, U.S., foreign policy throughout the 20th century was the prevention of German-Russian cooperation. If these two countries can join forces, the only power that could pose a real threat to the United States could be created. Friedman literally put it this way, the U.S.'s ancient fear of German industrial capital and German technology merging with Russian raw materials and Russian labor would be a unique alliance that the U.S. has been deadly dreaded for centuries. And he will do everything he can to prevent this from happening. That's what the whole history of the 20th century was about. Yet we also know from the teachings of modern spiritual science, anthroposophy, and Rudolf Steiner, that this is the path of development, the future of humanity from the cooperation of the current Germanic German culture and the future Slavic Russian culture, East Central and Eastern Europe. And should unfold from each other's fertilization. As part of Central Europe, Hungary has and will continue to play an important role in this fight. Therefore, the war will continue in some form until the Germans and the Slavs, that is, the Central and Eastern Europeans, find each other and unite with the common goal of liberating humanity from the yoke of the West," he pointed out. Rudolf Steiner wrote in his note towards the end of the First World War, where he summed up the real stakes of the Great War, in fact, the struggle between the Anglo-American plutocrats, the Western big capital groups, and the people of Central Europe is a struggle for Russian culture. He then added, the moment this fact is revealed to the world from Central Europe, a real situation replaces the unreal, so we have no choice, either to expose the lie that the West must apply in order to enforce its will, and to state that the main leaders of Anglo-American interests are trying to realize world domination by the means of the capitalist economy. The impulses of the French Revolution in order to hide behind them, the ideals of freedom, equality, fraternity, democracy, human rights and freedom of expression, or let the world rule be handed over to a secret, occult group in the Anglo-American world until the real spiritual purpose of the earth is saved from the subjugated German and Slavic territories at the cost of future bloodshed. End of reading